Hi everyone, I'm Valerie, I'm a software engineer, and it's been a while since I've done a Q&A video. So in this video, I wanted to go over how to become a software engineer, what it's like being a software engineer, and the day-to-day -day life of a software engineer. And I'll be answering all these questions, so keep watching. Number one, what education do I need to become a software engineer? Most people go for the four-year traditional computer science degree. If you follow me, you know that I became a software engineer without a college education. I'm a college dropout and I now work at one of the most valuable tech companies in the world as a software engineer. So if you want to know how I did it, keep watching the rest of this video. Question number two, what programming languages should I learn first? Step zero is to ask yourself, what kind of software engineer do you want to be? Do you want to be back end, full stack, front end? Do you want to be a mobile engineer? Do you want to be a machine learning engineer? There's so many different ways. And all of this is encapsulated under the software engineering term. And then once you've answered that question, look into the tech stack that people use to do the work that whatever engineer you want to be does. Right, so if you wanna be a full stack engineer, what is the tech stack that they use? Because there's a boatload of information out there on the internet and there's a ton of different paths you can take in your software engineer career. Today, I'm gonna to give you a Triple 10 Bootcamp as an example. Triple 10 is a full stack coding bootcamp that teaches you everything you need to know, even all the languages that you need to know to make it as a software engineer. And they have a money back guarantee. If you don't land a job within six months post-graduation, you get your money back. Those are the kind of coding bootcamps you should be looking out for. So to answer this question, if you don't know what language will suit you in the best way, I highly recommend an exclusive and free career consultation with one of Triple Ten's tutors who will help you find out which path into tech is right for you and how to get started with a ready to go list of next steps. Sign up for their free career consultation in the link in the description box below. And you can use my promo code BABE for a 30% discount off of Triple Ten's programs. Question number three, do I need a degree in computer science to be a software engineer? Although most people pursue a computer science degree or some kind of engineering degree and they get into the software engineering career, it's not required. I know plenty of people who are self-taught coders. Some of them learned on their own. Some of them went to a coding bootcamp that's virtual or in person, which is really helpful because a coding bootcamp is hands-on and you'll pick up skills you need to succeed in the industry. With bootcamp training, you can concentrate as much as you want on learning new skills and get the new profession you've been dreaming of in a short period of time. Bootcamps have many advantages and they all vary from bootcamp to bootcamp. But since we're looking at Triple Ten today, I'd like to point out some of their advantages. As an example, Triple Ten has early hiring, meaning that statistically 53% of Triple Ten students land jobs before graduating. Moreover, 71% of Triple Ten's graduates acquire remote jobs. They have really high starting salaries when they land their new role. And of course, being remote, they can work from anywhere in the world. Among other things, Triple Ten has a great rating, 4.8 out of 5 stars for excellence, so it's a top rated recommendation for you. Number four, are coding bootcamps a good alternative to a traditional degree? Yes, I think so. I believe that if you know what you want to do and you want to start learning practical skills that is used in the tech industry today, that is super up to date in the industry you should go to a coding bootcamp. If you're unsure of what you wanna do for a career and you wanna spend some time, like four to eight years in college and you wanna have the college experience, then definitely do that. It's up to you. Question number five, how do I build a portfolio to showcase my skills? Yes, so there's a bunch of projects you can build to showcase your skills. It really depends on what kind of software engineer job you want, as I mentioned earlier, but this is why Triple Ten's program is rated highly. Triple Ten gives you a hands-on experience building out projects that you can add to your portfolio so that after graduation, you will have a job-ready portfolio. Question number seven, how do I find internships or entry-level positions? I like sites like WellFound. It used to be called AngelList. I like builtin.com. I like Google Jobs. I like LinkedIn Jobs. 
Those are really good sites. And of course, as a triple 10 student, you would get triple 10's personalized support, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, personal success managers, and personal career coaching for every student. And I absolutely appreciate triple 10's lifelong career assistance where graduates receive ongoing support from their career advisors. Question number eight, how can I network with other software engineers and professionals in the tech industry? I'd say go to hackathons, tech events, tech meetups are really good. It would be helpful if you move to a major tech city. I know like it's not accessible to everyone. It takes some money, but people have done it broke. I've done it broke. I moved because I knew that San Francisco had way more tech opportunities than where I was living. I took that risk to move. So moving to a major tech city is an investment in yourself as well. Question number nine, should I still learn to code? Okay. I would like to bring up an example. Nowadays, right, there's audiobooks, there's podcasts, there's text-to-speech readers, but do you still need to read? Yes, you still do need to read. <laughs> Even though like the machines are doing it all for us, we still need to read. There's videos, there's captions, but we still need to read, right? So I'd say the same thing for coding. I think just because ChatGPT can code for you, like I, I was using ChatGPT the other day and it was hallucinating some code or like some code just didn't compile, right? So you can't completely rely on a tool to do everything for you. It's also the same with food. Like we have access to food everywhere. Like there's restaurants, there's fast food, there's grocery stores that make ready meals and you can find food anywhere. But should you learn how to cook? Yes, because I have custom dietary needs. So to circle back, learning how to code Building things from scratch is a great tool for yourself and your career. Question number 10, what do employers want to see in job interviews? Employers want to see that you can code and that you can communicate while solving the problems in front of the interviewer. Triple 10 has a super useful guide for this called Employers Secrets for Success. If you wanted to have more information about this and I'll link it in the description box below. Question number 11, how much do software engineers make? Triple 10 has done a lot of research on tech salaries and uh, how their graduates have succeeded with their salaries. And here are some of the findings. It's really dependent on your location and your industry and what kind of role you're in. So for example, Triple 10 graduates make definitely more than $100,000 a year. And it also depends on your location, your industry, and it also depends on your level, right? Like if you're a junior engineer, obviously you're making less than a senior engineer. For example, if you're a software engineer, the average salary in the aerospace and defense industry is $130,000 per year. If you're in San Francisco, your average software engineer salary is $174,000. Obviously average can mean there's people making less and there's people making way more. This is just the average. You don't necessarily need to be location-based because you can work remotely as a triple 10 graduate. Finding a remote job is in your favor. Take a look at triple 10's article here to see what city and location you want to be in, what industry you want to be in, and to see how much you can make. I will also link the article in the description box below if you want to check that out. Question number 12, how to network starting out in your career. I'm pretty introverted. Most people would not say so. Most people at work, especially, they think I'm really extroverted uh, because I'm scheduling lunch with them. I'm having coffee. I'm talking to people a lot. I recently made it my rule to talk to one person a day. Like it could be someone I know, could be someone new at work. If it's someone I already know, I'm basically deepening my relationship with them. I'm building rapport. If it's someone new, like I'm like, oh, cool. I'm starting my connection with them and I'm getting to know them. It doesn't have to be a long conversation. Sometimes it's just, hi, how are you? Sometimes it can be like a 10 minute conversation. Sometimes it's an entire lunch break. It's better to ask people about themselves than to talk about yourself because when you talk about yourself, it's like, oh yeah, whatever. But when you ask people about them, like they, people love talking about themselves. Okay. So it's just, um, I ask people, you know, about their day, about 
things that they've talked about before and they just, they naturally think I'm a social butterfly or something, but I'm not like, I, I am constantly exercising my social muscle because I can get into a place where I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm shy. I suggest reading Triple Ten's article called How to Network and Stay Sane because they give some really great tips and the link will be in the description box as well. What skills are most important for a successful software engineering career? The number one skill is problem solving. When I go into work, I don't consider myself a software engineer. Like I consider myself a professional problem solver. Coding is just one tool to be able to solve a problem. There's people out there solving problems without code, right? And so as a software engineer, you are a problem solver, solving things mostly with code. Other times when you're asked to build something, like you have to get the requirements, like what, what is the end goal here? What is the product manager or your engineering team looking for with this product? Like what is their use case, right? You have to be asking all of these questions and that comes with the problem solving skill set. I think another thing is it's very important to sit with the problem. I used to distract myself whenever it got uncomfortable. Whenever it was too hard for me to solve something, I would try to distract myself with my phone or I'd go on my phone or I'd go do something else, right? But now I sit with the problem until my brain comes up with something. I sit there and, you know, try to focus. It's very important to be proactive to try to find the solutions to the problems you're solving. Triple Ten also teaches some great skills in their program and they also have a special article on this topic which also mentions problem solving and they highlighted some more skills that are necessary which I absolutely agree with which is collaboration and communication and continuous learning. Those are super important as well. Be sure to check out their blog post. I will add the link in the description box below. That is all the questions I'm answering for now. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. And just a reminder that the link to Triple Ten's free career consultation is in the link in the description box below. And you can use my promo code BABE to get 30% off all of Triple Ten's programs. Let me know if you're curious about anything else, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.